greetings everyone it's great to see you once again and i'm so glad you're here you know what how many of you like to read i love to read in fact um i had just finished reading this book a little while ago and it was a book that i happened to be in the book store this is why i didn't get to read it after a while of having it and the author of the book was in the store. And so she told me a little bit about what the book was about. And it's called Flight, but it was about a boy, like you see right here, a brother and a sister, but the brother was just ready to start high school. But there was one problem. He didn't know how to read and he kind of kept it a secret all these years. So it was a fun book to read and discover how they were able to help him. And because she was there, she signed the book. That's called an autograph. She autographed the book that she was the author or is the author. Yes. So that was a, a, a fun book that I just read a little while ago. And then right now I'm reading uh, three books, three, a uh, sequence of three about how did the Amish people live? You know, the Amish people that live in Pennsylvania, I've always been curious about their life and, and, and how they worship God and, and where God, what, how God played a big part in their life. So that's what I'm reading now. So I always like to read to learn something new or just to have something relaxing to read. So, but if you look around here, like here and here, you'll notice that I brought some books. I brought part of my book collection. And these books came from my home. So I thought it'd be fun to play a little game with uh, these books. I'll hold up a book and you guess, um, and try to guess what kind of book it might be. Okay, so let's start with this big one right here. Oh my goodness, it's huge, big. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, what kind of book what do you think's inside this book? This way looking at it, around. Well, if I open it up, yeah, there's words inside this book. Actually, thousands and thousands of words. And what do we call this book? A dictionary, right. And you know what? The people who wrote all these books used the words from this dictionary. They would use words because dictionaries um, can carry lots of words and their meaning and what they mean to us. So that's our first one. All right, so there's our dictionary. What about this one? It's kind of red also. What kind of book do you think? It's big, has a lot of pages. What do you think this book could be by just looking at the cover? Well, if you said cookbook, you're right. Sure, we have cookbooks that give us lots of recipes and just different things to try in our kitchen, right? I don't know how many of you like to cook. And I know sometimes you, we can watch the cooking channel on TV, but it's nice to look up more information about our book, in a book, on a recipe. Okay, how about this one? Oh, it's heavy too. Okay, it's a big book and it's been around a while. You can tell it's kind of worn and you might, some of you might recognize it. Yeah, it, this is, it says reading. This is a literature book. It is a collection of lots of different stories. So fun stories, nonfiction stories, real stories like like this one. This one is about the ship, the Titanic, how it sank. That's a true life story. So that is in this book. But there's other stories in this book, like um, silly stories sometimes, fiction stories. Famous authors are in here. A whole collection of different reading stories. So that is a, a great book to try different types of literature. It's a literature book. Now here's one, I don't know if any of you recognize it. Before you started school, this book might have been read to you. 
It's a, it's a special book and it's called The Real Mother Goose. And inside this book, there's riddles and poems and short little stories, all of them that were written long ago. And maybe you recognize this one, maybe you do. How about this? I'll say, Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb, he pulled out a, who knows, plum and said, what a good boy am I? So in Mother Goose, they have lots of illustrations. And this one right here, with this beautiful garden and everything, is a Mary Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? So those are some that might be familiar to you at home. And you know what, a lot of our literature stories reflect back sometimes on Mother Goose uh, riddles and rhymes. So it's kind of fun to learn this. So we'll put them in there. Now I bet you might recognize this one. Dr. Seuss, right, the cat in the hat, right. And some books have cartoons, sometimes books have comics, so all kinds of different books, aren't there? So oh wait, what do you guess this one might be? Yeah, it is about space. I see an astronaut and I see the earth. Right, it's a book about space. We always love to see, are curious and like to know more about what's out there. What about this one, a rainbow and a cloud and rain falling down and the sun? Yeah, it's all about the weather, right? And then what about this one? One of my favorites, penguins, there they are. But it's also about polar bears, two different things. Penguins and polar bears, lots of interesting facts on both of those animals, kind of special. Now, not all books have hard covers, of course, and these books come in the form of like magazines. Now, this is a zoo news. If you've been to the zoo, these, this book would tell you about other animals that you might see at the zoo. They take the pictures from there. And this is a ranger rip. These are nonfiction. They're about real life animals. And then here's one more here, and that is a book only about our wonderful earth, our earth. So lots of things to choose from. But I have one more book, and it's right here. And what's in this book? Well, let me give you a hint. There are rules in this book. Mm -hmm. There um, are stories in this book and lots of stories in this book. And there are is beautiful poetry, um, different than in Mother Goose. And there's letters in here, letters that someone wrote to other people, right? There's letters and there's wonderful predictions about our future. And you know what? If you're going to shop for a book or going to the library and you, you're curious to know what's this book about because you've not seen the cover or anything, you can take the book and you can look at the back of the book and I'll tell you a little bit, a little summary of what the book is about. Or you might be able to open up the flap if it has a flap and it tells you about the story there. So you can read it and say, hmm, yeah, that one I'm interested in. I think I'll check that out at the library. The library is a great place to get books. Well, this book also ha has, um, not a flap to open up to tell what it's about, but it says inside what it's about. It says this, it says everything that was written in the past, that means long ago, was written to teach us that scriptures give us patience and endurance, that means holding fast and waiting and encouragement so that we can have hope. Yes, this book is about hope. Hope. How about that? I always thought of that. What is this book? The Bible. Right. Many stories, many, many beautiful poetry in our Psalms and Proverbs. And yes, it is our Bible, the Holy Bible. But another way we could call it is this is the book of hope. So even when things go wrong, right? 
we have a reason to be happy because we know that God is always with us no matter what, right? And Jesus died and he rose again and we can build our hope on him. This book talks about Jesus a lot because this book is the Bible, right? And the Bible is a book of hope and it is a wonderful book to read. Now, I know I read these kind of books at night because it kind of is a quiet time to read and just enjoyable. But you know what? You can read the Bible in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night. You can read it at church. You can read it at Sunday school. You can read it anytime. So I'm so glad that you are reading now or learning how to read. Those are important things. Now, if I look at all these books, I hope that one day, one day you will read these books and many more. I know you will. Because books tell us about the wonderful world, like space, the animals that live there, the weather, more animals, earth. Those are about the world. Books tell us about people the brother and sister, the Amish people, people who God created and made right. But of all these books, the one book we need to read, and we read, and we read it as often as, as we can, um, is the Bible. Now, I thought it would be kind of fun for you to say to mom or dad and say, hmm, dad, mom, where did you put the book of hope? I was looking for it. Because you know what? I never ever heard of that connection before. I never heard of it before. And I just think it sounds pretty special. It's always been the Bible. I didn't think about, oh, it really is all about hope. And your mom would go, huh? What are you talking about? The book of hope? What was this me? And you would say, mom, the Bible. And, and, all. and I think that's what I'm going to be thinking too, since this is a new thing for me also, is that I'm not, I'm not going to just call it the Bible, I'm going to call it the Bible, which is the book of hope. I think that would be kind of a fun thing to, to do and show that that's one of the meanings of the Bible. There's so many more. So let's, let's go ahead and pray about that. Are you ready? Dear God, Thank you for all kinds of books. Are you ready? Thank you for all kinds of books. Thank you for books about animals. Thank you for books about animals. Books about space. Books about space. And books about how to cook. And books about how to cook. And many more. And many more. The, thank you for the book of hope. Thank you for the book of hope. The Bible. The Bible. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week this week and just remember another name for the Bible is the book of hope. Yes. Have a great, great week. See you next week. Bye-bye.